The John Deere J-Series four-wheel drive loaders are very versatile machines. They're designed to help you get your work done quickly. They're built tough so you can rely on them day after day. They are world-class machines manufactured in an ISO 9001 certified factory. And they're comfortable to keep you productive during those long days. The machines are very easy to service. And they are very easy to run. Plus, these machines are built with your safety in mind. Not only operator safety, but the safety of others working around you. In the next few minutes, we'll see how this concern for safety is incorporated into the everyday maintenance and operation of the John Deere 724, 744, and 824J four-wheel drive loaders. The information we're about to review and much more is contained in the machine operator's manual. Located in the storage compartment under the seat, it should always be kept there for ready reference when periodic maintenance, safety, and operational questions arise. In addition, a special safety manual will accompany the operator's manual. It's your responsibility as the operator to read and understand both before operating the machine. This video is divided into three sections. The first section shows the pre-start walk around and daily service on the machine. The second section looks at the operator station with its controls and safety systems. And the third section examines some safety tips when operating the machine. These sections may be watched individually or all together. Each section is identified by a numbered symbol in the lower right corner of the screen corresponding to those shown here for each section. This will help you search through the tape to find the specific section you want to view. In this section, we'll show a pre-start walk around of the machine, including the daily service checks on the loader. Although we're using an 824J, the daily checks and service locations are the same or similar for the 724 and 744J models. Daily service checkpoints are located so they can be done with the loader bucket or attachment sitting firmly on the ground. This eliminates the possibility of the loader boom or attachment dropping and causing injury. However, if the boom must be raised for service work, always make sure it's supported. A boom safety support is provided as standard equipment and should always be left with the machine. Service begins on the left side of the machine. Inside the left access door is the periodic maintenance chart. It provides a breakdown of service requirements at specified intervals for your convenience and it includes a diagram showing the service checkpoints on the machine. This information is also found in the operator's manual. On the left side, you can check the hydraulic system oil level through this sight glass. The filler cap is located on top of the hydraulic reservoir behind the rear window if oil needs to be added. Fill with John Deere High Guard hydraulic oil or equivalent. Engine oil level is checked with this dipstick. When necessary, oil is added through this tube. Fill with John Deere Supreme Plus 50 or equivalent. Belt tension and condition can be checked here. You can also see the guard that covers the engine cooling fan. You can check the engine coolant level through the coolant recovery tank. If necessary, coolant can be added to the recovery tank. Add a mixture of clean, soft water and a permanent type low silicate ethylene glycol based antifreeze. The fuel filters are also accessed here. 
If equipped with a cab, the window washer fluid tank can be checked and filled here. The fuel filler is located at the left rear corner of the loader and can be reached while standing on the ground. The batteries are located on either side of the engine compartment and can be checked by unbolting and opening the access cover. When removing the batteries, disconnect the ground or negative cables first. This helps prevent damage to electrical components and lessens the potential for sparks that could ignite battery gases. Walking around to the rear of the machine, you can access the radiator, transmission, and hydraulic coolers by opening the hinged rear grill. Be sure this area is clear of debris before operation. Other checks can be performed on the right side of the engine. Notice the location of the right side battery. The air cleaner is accessed from this side for cleaning or replacement. The starter is also located on this side. The starter terminals are shielded to prevent shorting across them to start the engine. Bypass starting is a dangerous practice. Start the engine only from the operator station with a key. The starter also includes a terminal for safely jump starting the loader with a dead battery so it's not necessary to jump start at the batteries. While you're performing your daily checks, look for exposed wires or loose harness connections that may later cause unexpected problems. Also look around the machine for mechanical damage, missing bolts, excessive wear, anything that might cause a failure at a critical moment. Check for loose or missing wheel hardware. This inspection should include the ROPS and its fasteners. And check all four tires for cuts or problems that may pose potential downtime. Make sure the tires are properly inflated. Low front tire pressure can make the machine unstable when lifting or carrying a load. Too much rear tire pressure makes the machine harder to handle on hard surfaces. As you walk around the front of the unit, look at the condition of the bucket and cutting edge. Also, as you inspect the machine, look for hydraulic leaks, frayed hoses, damaged tubes, missing clamps, or rubbing hoses. A special warning about searching for high pressure leaks. Escaping fluid under pressure can penetrate the skin, causing serious injury. Search for leaks with a piece of cardboard. If an accident occurs, see a doctor immediately. Don't wait. Medical advice on treating injection injuries is available 24 hours a day from the Deer and Company Medical Department at the toll-free number on the screen. Although not a daily requirement, the loader linkage and cylinder pivot should be lubricated every 100 hours. Refer to the periodic maintenance chart or operator's manual for the location of the lubrication points. Another daily service check is the transmission oil level. The oil level is checked with the sight glass at the left side of the transmission. However, to get a true reading, the engine must be running and at operating temperature. When climbing onto or off the machine, be sure to use the steps and handholds. Operators are more frequently injured by falls from equipment than any other single cause. It's important that you face the machine and maintain at least a three-point contact, two hands and a foot, or two feet and a hand. With the machine running and bucket on the ground, be sure the neutral lock is engaged, as well as the park brake. After about five minutes, check the oil level with the machine still running. If additional fluid is required, use John Deere High Guard hydraulic oil or equivalent. The filler is located above the sight gauge on the left side of the articulation area. 
These machines have excellent visibility. With cab equipped machines, be sure to take a moment to clean the glass so you can see where you're going and who's around you. Also, a clean operator station goes a long way in promoting safe operation. Be sure to keep things clear of the pedals. This concludes the pre-start inspection and daily service of the machine. For your convenience, a pre-start inspection checklist is printed in your operator's manual. As mentioned earlier, it's important to maintain a three-point contact while climbing on or off the machine. For comfort during a long day's work, the seat has many adjustments to fit your body. Of course, there is the fore and aft movement for leg length. The weight adjustment is simple to do and provides a smooth ride. With the optional air suspension seat, height is adjusted using the same control. The seat back angle can be adjusted to provide additional comfort. Plus, there is a lumbar support control and the armrest can be tilted to your liking. The left armrest angle is adjusted with a knob under the armrest. The right armrest can also be adjusted to provide you with a comfortable rest while operating the loader controls. A retractable seat belt comfortably and securely holds you in the seat. In the event of an overturn, that's where you want to stay. For these reasons, the seat belt should be kept in proper working order. Be aware of its condition and replace when necessary, at least every three years regardless of appearance. Before operating any machine, you need to become familiar with the operating controls and instrumentation. Most of the machine's controls and indicators are located on the front console. With the deluxe monitor, you have the engine oil pressure gauge, engine coolant, hydraulic fluid and transmission fluid temperature gauges, speedometer, and fuel gauge. The digital display shows which gear and direction the selector is in, auto or manual transmission mode, engine RPM, hour meter, and system voltage. Across the top of the monitor you have the turn signal indicators, yellow caution light, and red stop light with audible alarm, plus individual system warning lights. The caution and stop indicators in association with the system indicator lights will alert you of potential problems. During operation, if the yellow caution service required indicator light comes on, a problem is developing in one of the systems which is also illuminated. It is not necessary to stop the engine, but the cause should be investigated as soon as possible. If the red stop indicator flashes and the alarm sounds, stop immediately and investigate the cause. In addition to the system indicator lights, you have a fastened seatbelt light and park brake indicator. The digital display shows gear selection, direction, engine RPM, hour meter, and battery voltage. By pressing the select button, you can display the odometer reading in either miles or kilometers. The digital display also gives access to the accessory mode to customize the machine and the diagnostic mode to help troubleshoot machine malfunctions. Accessory mode is used to access functions that customize the loader, such as clutch cutoff sensitivity, quick shift actions, and automatic transmission shifting. Also in front of you are the transmission controls. The FNR lever lets you easily shuttle between forward, neutral, and reverse. Rotating the lever lets you manually select first, second, third, or fourth gear. Or in automatic, 
the transmission will automatically shift through the gears. The lever can be also locked into the neutral position. Neutral start protection is another piece of safety equipment designed into the J-Series. The unit will not start unless the direction lever is in neutral. The horn is located in the middle of the steering wheel. Also to the left of the steering column is the cold weather start aid switch if equipped. On the right side of the steering column, you have the control for the turn signals. Move the switch up to activate the left turn signal and down to activate the right turn signal. Also to the front are the ignition switch and the park brake switch. The park brake switch has three positions. Push on the top and it stays in the on position, indicating that the park brake is applied. Push on the bottom to the spring-loaded reset position to turn the park brake off. The switch moves to the off position when released, showing the park brake is off. When the park brake is applied, not only is the park brake set, the transmission is automatically disengaged. If an attempt is made to move the machine in either direction with the park brake on, the machine will not move. Since it won't move, the park brake is not damaged by trying to drive away with it on. When the switch is turned off, the park brake is released and the transmission may now be activated. A very important feature provided by the park brake system is its automatic engagement. Anytime the ignition is turned off, the park brake automatically engages. If the machine happens to be moving at the time, it comes to a stop. This brings up another important point. If the machine is shut down with the park brake switch in the off position, it must be reset after engine restart to disengage the park brake. Other controls in front of you include the steering wheel tilt lever. The accelerator and the left and right brake pedals. The button on the floor to the far left is the optional differential lock. In tough digging or poor tractive conditions, engaging the differential lock locks both wheels on the axle together. When traction improves, releasing the button disengages the lock. The loader controls are conveniently located for low effort short throw operation. This unit is equipped with two lever controls. Forward and backward movement of the right lever controls boom raise and lower. Forward and rearward movement of the left lever controls the bucket. A single lever control is also available. Forward and backward movement controls boom raise and lower. Left and right movement controls bucket dump and curl. The loader is equipped with a return to dig feature. By pulling the bucket lever rearward into the detent or to the left detent with a single lever control, the bucket will return to the preset dig position. The return to dig setting is adjusted by loosening two cap screws on the bucket cylinder and moving the rod to the desired position and retightening the cap screws. By using the return to dig, the operator can concentrate on filling the bucket and not worry if his bucket is entering the pile at a too steep or too shallow an angle. On top of the bucket lever is the quick shift control. Depending on how the operator sets the function with the monitor, the transmission can continue to shift down one gear at a time with each push. This is helpful when the operator wants to quickly downshift, such as in this situation where the operator needs to slow from loading before coming into the pile to load. The quick shift can also be set to shift down one gear 
and back up one gear with consecutive pushes of the button. These are used for precise manual control of the transmission under changing loading conditions. The right-hand console groups controls for many features in one convenient location. There are two versions of the right console. This is the style console that is used with the two-lever fingertip loader and bucket controls. This is the style used with a single lever control. Both consoles contain the same features. For this program, we'll show the console used with the two lever fingertip controls. These controls include the ride control. The operator can select off, on, or automatic ride control operation. In the on position, ride control is activated 100% of the time. In this mode, a hydraulic accumulator is added to the loader boom cylinder circuit to smooth out bumps for improved mobility. When automatic is selected, the right control is automatically activated whenever ground speed is over 3 miles per hour. It automatically turns off when ground speed is under 3 miles per hour. Right control should not be used during digging and loading operations where precise control of the loader bucket is needed. Another control on the right console is the boom height kickout. With the switch on, pulling the boom lever backward into the detent raises the boom to a preset height. This adds to safe and convenient operation when loading trucks or hoppers of identical height. It increases operator productivity while reducing fatigue. To set the bucket height, raise the boom to the desired level, then push and hold the boom switch in the on position for a few seconds until you hear a beep. Next to the boom height switch is the return to carry switch. With the return to carry engaged, pushing the lever forward into detent allows the boom to lower and automatically stop at a preset height. This allows the operator to concentrate on driving rather than on bucket and attachment carry positions. Setting the return to carry position is the same procedure as setting boom height kickout. Note, for the system to function properly, the return to carry must be set at a lower position than the boom height kickout setting. When the return to carry is disengaged, pushing the lever forward into the detent places the boom in the float position. This allows the bucket to follow the contour of the ground. The pilot enable disable switch removes pilot pressure from the loader controls. The lock should be engaged when you stop the engine or when you leave the operator station. The switch also allows the operator to lower the boom if he is caught without hydraulic power. Holding the spring return switch gives him the hydraulic pressure to activate the pilot control valve and move the boom safely to the ground. Also on the right console, you have the control for the hydraulic attachment coupler if equipped and switches for the work lights, drive lights, and four-way flashers. The 724J, 744J, and 824J loaders are equipped with spin control to help reduce spin when crowding a stockpile or material stack. Many operators prefer to reduce wheel spin in loading operations. When spin control is activated, the engine reduces speed to reduce wheel spin when the hydraulic system pressure rises. The higher the spin control setting, the larger the amount of speed reduction. Also on the right console is the neutral switch for the left and right brake pedal. Turning the clutch cutoff switch on allows the transmission to shift to neutral whenever either brake pedal is applied. This allows the operator to maintain high engine speed for adequate hydraulic flow without fighting forward motion with the brakes. Also on the right console is the automatic shifting control. With the auto on, the transmission will automatically shift up to and down from the highest gear set on the gear selector. 
Also to the operator's right are the controls for the heater and air conditioner. Also here are the front and rear wiper washer controls. Pressing on the controls knobs will activate the washer for the selected wiper. To the rear is a cup holder and tray. By removing the tray, you have access to the fuses, relays, and circuit breakers. To the operator's left is a place to hold a cooler. Next to the seat is a place to carry a thermos. On the left of the front console is the defroster control for the windows. Also to the left is a place to store a fire extinguisher if equipped. For open ventilation on cab units, the left door can be locked open. If cross ventilation is desired, the right window can be opened and locked into position. To maintain a solid handhold to exit the machine, the door should be released from the lowest step from which the latch can be reached. This concludes the controls and safety system portion of this video. It's recommended that you review and understand the operator's manual to become more familiar with the machine controls and features before operating. As we've seen in the previous sections of this video, the design of these John Deere loaders reflects a lot of consideration for safety. But does this automatically ensure safety on the job site? There are many pieces of safety equipment on the loader, but there's no assurance that the safety equipment will get the job done unless you use it. As we've seen in the previous section of this video, one of the most important pieces of safety equipment is your seat belt. Buckle up before you start the engine. The rollover protection structure by itself does not assure your safety in the event of an overturn. If you're not wearing your seat belt, you could be thrown or crushed. Don't operate under the mistaken impression that if a machine overturns, you can hold on or jump free. That impression may be fatal. Before starting out, make a quick check of the operational controls. It's better to take a moment now than to find out at a critical moment when it's too late to avoid an accident. Before you dig, be sure to call the utility services in the area to have the job site marked for underground lines or structures. In most areas, there is a free or low-cost one-call locator service. It's better to take a little time before the project begins to know what you may encounter. If you cut through a gas pipeline or an electrical line, you could be losing more than a little time. As mentioned, it's up to you to use your safety equipment. And it's also up to you to use good safety judgment. As the operator, you have the primary responsibility for the actions of the loader. Always think about what you have to do before you do it. Never stop thinking about what is the safe thing to do, not only for yourself, but also for the people around you. This brings up another important point. There is only one seat and seat belt in the loader, and that's for you, the operator. These machines are not designed for riders. And when working in close areas, reduce your speed. You never know what might pop out in front of you or in back of you. Even though the reverse alarm is sounding, you still need to look behind you before and while backing up. You should reduce your speed when in rough terrain or when carrying a heavy load. No matter what the terrain, always carry your bucket low for better stability and visibility. This is particularly true when working on slopes. Always drive up or down the slope with the heaviest end of the loader on the uphill side. That means with a loaded bucket, you need to drive forward up a hill. Drive up vertically and avoid turning. 
that's when the machine is least stable. It may overturn. With an empty bucket, back up the slope. When using the loader, keep the loading surface smooth and level. This not only makes it easier to load a truck, it also improves stability when the loader boom is being raised. Be especially careful to stay away from undercut embankments. This can be hazardous to machines and operators either above or below. When shutting down the machine, there are a few simple procedures that you should follow. The machine should be parked on a level surface with the attachment lowered to the ground. Move the F and R lever to neutral and set the lock. Engage the park brake and operate the engine at half speed without load for a couple of minutes. This will help cool down the turbocharger. Slow the engine to low idle before stopping the engine. Move the hydraulic control levers to release the pressure. Then engage the pilot enable disable switch. If you're shutting down for the day, it's a good idea to install vandal protection and lock up the machine. You never know who might drop by. If you plan to haul the unit, you should always use caution when loading it on or off a trailer. Statistics show that this is the most likely time for a tipping accident. You should always fasten your seat belt before loading or unloading in case of overturn. The trailer should be parked on level ground. The bed should be clean of debris. Use chalk blocks against the trailer wheels to help prevent the trailer from moving. With the help of a spotter, drive onto the ramp slowly. The center line of the machine should be over the center line of the trailer. The machine should also be balanced fore and aft on the trailer. Once in position, place the FNR lever in neutral, set the FNR lock, and set the park brake. Be sure to install the articulation locking bar. Lower the front attachment. After the machine is shut down, move the hydraulic control levers to release hydraulic pressure and engage the pilot enable disable switch. As before, lock up the machine against vandalism. Fasten each corner of the machine to the trailer with a chain or cable with appropriate load binder. Tape the exhaust opening to protect the turbocharger. Be sure you mark and flag the trailer in accordance with the laws and ordinances in the areas where you'll be hauling the loader. Before you haul the machine, be sure of its overhead height to the ground. It's better to know your limitations beforehand rather than learning the hard way after you hit something. As you've seen, these John Deere J-Series loaders are equipped with many safety features and systems. But it's up to you, the operator, to use them. You have to think about every move you make before you make it. It doesn't matter how much experience you have, it only takes one mistake to make a difference in your life and in the lives of others. Statistics show that of all the accidents reported, over 90% of the operators hurt or killed were listed as experienced. Accidents don't always happen to the other guy. That other guy could be you.